My name is Sam Markell. I'm an extension plant pathologist at NDSU. It's September 1st, so it's fairly late in the growing season. I'm standing in a soybean field in Sargent County, and the field looks really quite good. Uh, there's, it's lush, it's green, it's thick. It's all the things that you want when you're growing soybeans. But it does have a disease that's new to the state. It's called frog eye leaf spot. And frog eye leaf spot has been a problem in the I states and the central plains and the mid south for some time. Uh, we've been expecting it to show up in North Dakota at some point, and, and it has. And so when you're looking at frog eye leaf spot, at least it's late in the season, what you're going to see are lesions. And they're generally circular, they can be a little bit angular. They have, it tends to have a brownish, to maybe even grayish center, and it's got a fairly distinct ring around the lesion that usually is dark brown to purple. You sometimes can see some graying in the middle of that lesion. If you flip this over, you often can see gray molding or gray mold of some sort in the middle of that lesion, and that's usually, usually a good diagnostic tool to identify frog eye. Now, there are a few diseases that look similar, Phyllosticta for one, but but we do know that this is frog eye and this is, this is new. So frog eye leaf spot is seed borne and residue borne both. So you, you can get it in infected seed, but usually once you get it in a field, you, you'll, this will survive on the residue for a couple of years. So if you have frog eye, you'll be at risk of frog eye the next time you put soybeans in if you only rotate out to corn or wheat or something for one year. The disease can be economically important. It can cause yield loss and it has in other parts of the country, but a lot of that depends on the time that it shows up and the severity. So we look at it generally starting after flowering all the way maybe up to R4 or pod fill. And if you have it at that point, you might want to think about managing it. Obviously we're long beyond that, so we're not worried about yield loss this year. We're not worried about yield loss occurring in this field, but it is something that we need to know about. So at this point, we don't really know how widespread frog eye is. We're out surveying right now to try to get a better handle on it. Uh, frog eye is brought on by conditions that are hot and humid. So we've had a hot and humid summer, so it's sort of not surprising that we had the conditions that would, would facilitate this disease. It's also not surprising that I'm very close to a shelter belt. Lots of times higher humidity because of lower winds, sometimes longer dew periods. We're out serving right now in the southeast corner of the state. We're trying to get a better understanding of where this is at. This winter, we're going to be looking at the frog eye and making sure that our fungicides are effective because you can manage this with fungicides as long as the pathogen's not resistant yet.